Hey everyone. Um, welcome to our crowdcast to explain to you how to participate um, in the crowd loans in general and especially the centrifuge one. Um, I'm gonna start off and then I'll be passing it over to Will. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Cassidy and I work on token design um, and research at Centrifuge. And Will, I'll hand it to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Will, I work at Parity. I have kind of like a funny title called Master Evaluators and yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and some slides with you all. All right. Um, well, if you could just ping me if anything ever seems out of place. Um, but I'll go ahead and get started here. So thanks everyone for joining us. Um, the the screen really says excited. click to exit full screen. I don't know if this is sharing, right? Ooh, maybe not. Let's see, maybe I got to share whole screen. Did that work? No. No. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It shows when you like don't do it full screen. Interesting. Same problem? Yeah. We just go um, through it like that. Yeah. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get get going with this then. Um, thanks for the patience, everyone, and super glad to have you here. Um, I'm going to start off with um, how Centrifuge is bringing real, real world assets to Polkadot um, and what we're trying to accomplish with getting a parachain, uh, a parachain slot on Polkadot. Um, and then I'll jump into some details about our crowd loan that's opening up tomorrow, which we're super excited about. And then I'll pass it over to Will, who can go into a lot more detail into how you can contribute your dot um, both to the centrifuge crowd loan, but also any other crowd loans that you'd be interested in contributing to as well. Because um, there are a lot of great projects that we want to integrate with and want to go live with us too. Um, so real world assets on Polkadot, what does this mean? Um, we really think that centrifuge is connecting Polkadot to a limitless DeFi potential by connecting the Polkadot ecosystem to real world assets. So Centrifuge Chain has been live since May 2020, um, and it's a standalone substrate chain right now, and we're looking to uh, turn that into a pair chain on Polkadot. Um, but we already wanted to go ahead and, and go live and get started and start financing real-world assets on chain. So that's why we already launched this standalone chain last year. And since then, we've reached almost 50 million in total value locked in the protocol and 64 million of assets financed all time. Um, we've integrated with two of the biggest DeFi protocols in Ethereum, MakerDAO and Aave, which is launching really soon. Um, so definitely stay tuned to that. Um, and we're really excited about how far we've come so far, but it's really important for us to take this next step in order to scale, in order to unlock liquidity um, by becoming a parachain uh, for the Polkadot ecosystem. 
Um, so we think that this is really a key step for Centrifuge um, and also for the future of DeFi in general, because we think that DeFi liquidity will grow across the entire blockchain multiverse by connecting more and more of these projects and really having a greater flow of liquidity. So Centrifuge is bringing in real world assets and that's one, we think, really big piece of the puzzle. But there are lots of other amazing projects out there like Akala or like Moonbeam that are bringing and bridging DeFi liquidity in different ways. So Akala with the stable coin, um, could be something that we use to finance assets in the centrifuge tin lake dev. Um, different projects coming from the Ethereum ecosystem can really easily use Moonbeam to bridge over any of the DeFi liquidity that they get on their networks. And that could also be bridged over to centrifuge. So I think we really see this as um, the the sum of all of these parts is, is only a part of the picture and it's actually going to grow to many times that once we actually have all of these different pair chains live the integrations live um, we can really start to grow DeFi tvl in the polka dot ecosystem at a really massive scale so i think that's what we're super excited about for the centrifuge pair chain and i think for us um that's really key in getting um Getting the system started is connecting to Polkadot in order to be able to scale and um, and really start moving forward with all of the visions that we have for the DeFi space. So our parachain crowd loan is launching on December fifteenth, um, and you know just to touch on some of the reasons why the parachain slot is super important. So we're really unlocking scalability by moving the Tin Lake pools from Ethereum where they exist today over to Polkadot. Um, the transaction fees will be so much cheaper. The um, speed of the transactions will be so much faster and we'll be able to actually integrate as part of this, the core infrastructure of, of how Polkadot um, has been created. It's, it's really, I think, one of the killer use cases of Polkadot is that um, interoperability is really built into um, Substrate and how all of these different parachain projects are using it. Um, and we also want a parachain slot to really be able to grow the DeFi TVL in the Polkadot ecosystem. And we think Centrifuge can really start to um, scale that massively, um, as well as integrations with, you know, Akala, the stablecoin I mentioned, Moonbeam, um, other awesome parachain projects that are launching now or yet to be launched. I think these are all the reasons that we're super excited and um, think it's really important to launch a parachain on Polkadot and to launch it now. Um, we didn't go for batch one because we really rely on these other projects to integrate with. And so we're waiting for them to go live and we're really interested in going for batch two and being able to go live so that we're ready in time to be able to integrate with all these other great projects. Um, but in order to make this happen, we need you guys uh, in order to get this parachain slot. So in order to realize this potential of real world DeFi in the Polkadot network, um, we need Centrifuge to win a parachain slot in these next batch of auctions. And for that, uh, we need you to lock your dot towards the Centrifuge crowd loan. Um, so just to go over some of those details that we announced. Um, so we're launching the crowd loan uh, tomorrow, December 15th. There's a soft cap of 10 million dot, um, which means that we'll make a decision if we need to, to go up to this hard cap of 15 million dot. Um, and so really trying to there protect this uh, supply of rewards, 12% of the entire CFG token supply being reserved for crowd loan contributors. And so we really have, you know, the interest of our contributors in mind in the community. Um, and so trying to give uh, a really large percentage of the network to those that contribute to the crowd loan. Um, and of course the bonuses. Um, so we've got a 10% early bird bonus, um, a 5% loyalty bonus so for, for those that contributed to the Altair crowd loan and locked KSM. Um, they will get also a reward there. 
by the way, make sure you contribute with the same address that you use to contribute the KSM to contribute the dot to the centrifuge crowd loan. Uh, heavyweight bonus of 5% and 5% referral rewards for both you and the person that you refer. Um, yeah, that's just an overview. I think we're really excited about this and hope that you are too. And you might be seeing all of this and wondering, how do I actually contribute this dot to the centrifuge crowd loan um, or any other crowd loan? And for that, I'm going to pass it now over to Will. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to share my screen here as well. Um, <clears throat> and I'm basically just going to talk about a lot of things kind of like, uh, hopefully if I, does this show up fine? Um, so yeah, basically going to talk about just kind of like broadly, like what Polkadot is, kind of a little bit more about kind of like what parachains are, uh, why these things are interesting, and I guess kind of uh, also just parsing considerations on actually contributing. Um, so as I kind of mentioned earlier, I have this funny title called Master Validators. Um, essentially what that means is a lot, like a lot of things that I work on are things related to like ecosystem infrastructure. So um, practical things for like a day-to-day -day basis, uh, that's kind of like coordinating a lot of things related to uh, validators for uh, Polkadot and Kusama, but also uh, just kind of like people that run nodes uh, in, in general. Um, and so, yeah, let me kind of, uh, talk a little bit more about kind of like blockchains and I guess kind of like where kind of Polkadot fits into these things. Uh, so blockchains are very broadly kind of like trustless social coordination mechanisms. Um, Polkadot in particular, uh, just some kind of details about it is that it's a proof of stake network that's secured by validators. And the validators on uh, both Polkadot and as well as Kusama, they provide economic security for all these different parachains. Um, what this kind of means is essentially like there is a bunch of stake that a bunch of like polka dot validators and people that nominate them uh, will go to to actually providing uh, economic uh, security as well as kind of the finality of all the different parachains that are connected to it. Um, this then kind of gives you also the benefit of having uh, interoperability between a bunch of these parachains. Um, there's actually a couple of different means of having like interoperability, but the main one is kind of via like XCM, which is kind of this like cross-chain messaging or like cross-consensus me uh, messaging. Um, but there's also a bunch of other um, bridges, to, like other networks and whatnot. And so um, there's bridges to like Ethereum, uh, bridges to, to Bitcoin, uh, people also working on like IBC bridges to uh, like the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, and so there's just a lot of whole, a lot of uh, interoperability kind of going, going on around here. And uh, just to kind of touch on like what this is kind of like how parachains fit into like Polkadot and um, what that actually kind of looks like. Uh, all, all these things are very much kind of like built from the same cloth and this is kind of like substrate. And all these things have kind of like uh, very similar features to things, but this is all kind of like encapsulated, I think in like the, the runtime. Uh, the runtime is kind of this like core blockchain logic for things. Uh, both Polkadot as well as uh, all the different chains, such as like Centrifuge and Altair, uh, all, all are kind of using like similar paradigms for actually like building things. And uh, there's a bunch of interesting benefits for this. Um, there's a lot of kind of primitives that get unlocked from this. Like there's a lot of like governance primitives. Um, there's a lot of uh, things related to like how you actually do like upgrades. So if you wanna actually make changes to your chain, uh, this can be uh, done via like governance. And there's these like really cool forkless uh, upgrades that actually kind of happen. Um, and so uh, this here sort of describes like this a little bit. Um, I stole this from some old slides that were like very technical. And so some of this is jargon. But basically, like, if you want to actually like run things, it looks on chain to see what the logic is, and it will kind of run this thing that's actually like on chain. So the actual kind of logic for what this blockchain stuff is sits on the blockchain itself, which is uh, kind of confusing, but it, it actually leads to really nice properties that um, allow you to uh, have kind of these these upgrade processes that are kind of like very like community oriented. And uh, Part of this, and, and this is also uh, related to both like Polkadot as well as um, the other different kind of parachains, but uh, just talking about like what DOT is and kind of like, the utility of it. Um, basically, like what can you use DOT for? Uh, there's a few different things. One of them is for governance. So um, basically participating and actually doing these like runtime upgrades, actually uh, voting on and backing 
what those changes are and actually pushing those like on chain and, and having that kind of uh, have the network actually upgrade itself. That's kind of like a part of that. Uh, the other things are there's a lot of like really interesting primitives for like democracy and governance and whatnot. And I'll touch on a little bit of these things in, uh, in a little bit, but um, this also kind of corresponds to like on-chain things such as the treasury and the council and uh, there's other kind of collectives that, that exist there. But um, I think there's a lot of like really powerful tools there for actually kind of uh, bootstrapping like an ecosystem and community around these things. Uh, the treasury in particular, like most chains will have a treasury. Uh, Polkadot and Kusama have ones. I think there might be some soon on Starfuge as well as Altair. Um, but it, you all interact with it in a very kind of similar manner. And uh, also kind of besides that, uh, you can use DOT for staking, either running a validator yourself or nominating others. Uh, the benefits of this is this helps secure the network and you will also get uh, a bunch of either like DOT or KSM in return as kind of like inflation happens. And the last part, which is uh, pretty relevant to, to what we're talking about here today is these parachain lease auctions. So you can use your DOT for actually bidding for uh, a parachain slot. And so the question then is kind of like, why might you want a, a parachain slot? And um, the answer to that is uh, a couple of different things. One is that um, you have kind of, uh, as a parachain, you get a bunch of interoperability with these other different parachains in the Polkadot ecosystem. So for example, if you want to be able to send uh, messages to these other chains, uh, this is actually pretty simple with uh, being like having like a parachain slot. And it also gives you the benefit of uh, getting this kind of like relay chain economic security. So right now there's like billions of dollars actually securing Polkadot and all these different parachains kind of like inherit this economic security. Um, and so also kind of like talking about these things, uh, Polkadot as well as a bunch of these different parachains have a lot of really cool things related to, to governance. Um, so this is partly this like dichotomy of both like agency as well as like up upgradability. And so uh, there's a lot of kind of means for actually kind of uh, participating in these things. There's a lot of like really uh, powerful primitives that allow people to make like DAOs and collectives and organize and, and kind of like do a lot of really cool things. And a lot of this happens via um, like on-chain proposals or motions or, or referenda. Uh, basically someone can uh, propose like a change to the network. So say they want to like change the amount of validators in the network. Uh, anyone can propose this and then people will vote on it. And uh, if enough people will vote on it, uh, then it will pass. You could actually make really uh, cool changes to, to how these things work. It's a very kind of like adaptive and uh, flexible and fluid kind of system. And uh, I think this slide should be a little bit later, but um, proposals have the the, uh, the capability to actually like change the network. Um, these things are like very uh, like adaptive as, as I kind of mentioned. And so it's like anyone that holds tokens either for Polkadot as well as like a parachain if people own the parachain tokens, uh, they have the power to actually kind of um, help direct and, and uh, shape the way that that network in the community actually kind of works for that. Um, so there's kind of one entity called like the, the council. And at some point this is actually going to be dissolved in favor of kind of uh, like just token holding people. But um, yeah, one, one thing that the council kind of uh, helps facilitate is the treasury and uh, every chain that has uh, like substrate related things has the, the capability of adding like a treasury uh, quite simply, but Generally, this is kind of just like a big pot of funds that belongs to the community, essentially. Right now, Polkadot has about uh, over like $600 million of DOT in it as, as of currently. Kusama also has a few hundred million, I think. And uh, anyone can make proposals to spend this kind of like how they think is, uh, is uh, what would be good for the community, the network, the ecosystem. And so um, if someone wants to build something, they can make a proposal to the uh, treasury and the, the overall kind of like governance community to request funds for actually like building things. Um, and so this kind of diagram here roughly kind of just has a few different kinds of the, the things that people can do with uh, DOT. So they can either kind of like make public proposals for things, which is um, talking about like what, can, what things do you actually want to change? Uh, they can also kind of like that council members. And uh, they can also go on uh, like public referenda. And a lot of these kind of like proposals uh, all get kind of like executed um, with, uh, without kind of like human interference, which is pretty, pretty interesting. 
Um, basically, like a lot of these things are really interesting, like primitives for stuff. And uh, I think the the TLDR this is basically like people uh, can actually participate in these networks and like what they do and how that shapes things. Um, say you want like uh, to participate in the the center future network if you want to actually like. Uh, propose things if you want to request like treasury funds and, and things like that. Uh, that's probably like the use cases for the token. And by participating in a bunch of these crowd loans and these parachain auctions, uh, that's kind of like ways to actually get some of these tokens for things. Uh, this is a little bit more of like governance things. But uh, then to talk a little bit more about kind of like parachains, um, one thing that people have called these before is like trust wormholes, which is a, a very interesting way of describing that, I suppose. Um, but basically, uh, parachains are these interoperable blockchains connected to a relay chain, which is uh, Polkadot or Kusama. Uh, as I mentioned before, they kind of share this economic security. And in order to be a parachain, uh, they need to bid for these uh, parachain slots. Or uh, in the future, this isn't actually uh, fully working and implemented yet, but uh, parathreads are kind of these like pay-as-you-go blockchains. Um, essentially, you could get the benefits of this like interoperability and whatnot, but you have to kind of like pay kind of per transaction to nominate it in DOT or KSM for that. Um, and yeah, crowd loans are kind of this, this mechanism by which a lot of these different parachains will actually uh, kind of acquire enough either DOT or KSM to get a parachain slot. So essentially, a parachain slot is gotten by actually like locking up uh, KSM or DOT. And what a bunch of these parachain teams will do is they'll open up like a crowd loan. Um, and this is kind of like this very like trust minimized uh, crowdfunding mechanism. So what happens is any dot holder essentially will lock up uh, their dot at this crowd loan. And in exchange, the, the, the token holder will kind of like get a bunch of like native parachain tokens um, in return for locking up this dot. Um, these parachains generally have these like lease periods uh, for Kusama at the moment, it's like 48 weeks for um, Polkadot, it's like 96 weeks. And so after this, this lease period is done, uh, so long as like the crowd loan that you contributed, they win this parachain slot, uh, you'll get your dot back. And so compared to a bunch of like the ICOs and these other like weird crowdfunding mechanisms of the past where you would just actually like give people tokens and you get tokens in, in exchange for that, um, you're essentially giving utility to these teams by locking up dot for it. And then you're getting your dot back like at the end of it. And so um, essentially like you'll get your tokens back. And so it's a very kind of uh, risk-free kind of way of actually kind of uh, contributing to things. Um, but the caveat though, is that like the dot that you contribute, it can't be staked or used in democracy and all the kind of governance stuff that I was just kind of talking about. Um, and so some things related to actually contributing to this is that like, say you own dot, uh, you can only contribute that dot to like one crowd load at a time, but you can't contribute the same dot to like multiple different things. And so it's important for people to actually kind of like decide what they actually kind of want to do with it. Uh, I should do your own research into a lot of these different kind of like projects, um, see kind of like what is interesting uh, to, to people and, and see if like the, the teams are legit or if kind of like uh, the use cases for them are, are things that they actually kind of appreciate. Um, and generally kind of like if there is, uh, if you get these parachain tokens, like what can people actually like do with it? Um, so a lot of these these different parachains, like some of the core things that people can do is either maybe like staking um, or, or like governance related things that I mentioned, but there's also a lot of other interesting use cases for things. Like for example, um, Altair and Centrifuge are uh, doing a lot of really cool stuff with like real world assets and uh, that, that type of stuff is kind of like unique to uh, these chains, but other other chains have different kind of things that uh, utility might be a little bit different. Um, and so, actually, kind of like practically, if you want to contribute to crowd loans, like what might you have to actually do? Um, you have to ensure that uh, there's no like other locks on the account. So, if you're doing things currently, like your staking dot, or if you have this like locked up in governance or or democracy stuff. Um, as I mentioned before, it's like you can't also have it locked up in, in those places as well. And so if you're currently staking, uh, you have to like stop staking. Um, unfortunately, there's this like 28 day unbonding period. So uh, you would have to wait. If you like unbond today, you have to un like wait 28 days, then you could um, unbond and withdraw it. And then if you're participating in like governance things, like if you're currently backing council members, uh, or if you've like voted on different like uh, proposals in the past, uh, you either like unvote for the current council members or you have to wait until those other democracy locks expire. 
And once you actually like have uh, your tokens and, and they're kind of like free to actually uh, be used in places, uh, then you can contribute to these crowd loans. Um, when you actually contribute to them, uh, for DOT, it gets locked up for 96 weeks, which is a decently long time. That's like almost uh, two years. And so I uh, should be very uh, kind of keen on like what that looks like for people. So for example, like if they store their keys on, um, I don't know, like paper or some like seed phrase or something like that, like uh, should back that up and make sure you have it like two years from now, just because uh, that's when th that's what you get to access that that dot uh, when when kind of these lease periods actually end. Um, the other kind of considerations for this are uh, you should not contribute from a ledger at the moment, just because uh, right now at least kind of like a bunch of these pair chains will need kind of like the the ledger app support for it. And it kind of just doesn't really work too well uh, when you kind of contribute it, just because the account that you contribute from is going to be the same account that you'll get uh, the parachain tokens from. Um, the other part is that uh, you shouldn't use either like proxy accounts or uh, multi sig accounts. Um, some parachains will work with this, but as kind of just a blanket general thing, like it's it's easier to just kind of like not use these things. Um, and then lastly, kind of just be prepared to hold on to it for ninety six weeks. Um, once you actually like have the uh, the tokens, the other part that you need to to do is um, have this in a Polkadot JS extension account. Um, so Polkadot JS, there's a couple different ways of actually uh, like custing funds and whatnot. But for most of these parachains, um, a lot of them will have their own websites. A lot of them will have a lot of different like interfaces for things. And so there's a lot of different kind of incentives to do it from a lot of like their own uh, UIs and th their dashboards and whatnot, just because there's things called referral codes and um, other teams have different interesting ways of doing things. For example, there's like liquid crowd loans uh, and some teams are doing interesting things like that. And generally kind of like uh, the way to actually do that is with kind of Spook.js extension. Uh, it's very similar to MetaMask if, if people have used that before. Um, and then just kind of talking about like the timetables for things, like what what's the time frame for this? What what kind of dates should people kind of like know about? Um, right now, there's kind of like these things have been scheduled in like batches, uh, and so right now is kind of this time period that this this first batch is actually ending. Um, so right now, there's been uh, four different parachain teams that have won the, the first four slots. Uh, this this batch of auctions is for five slots. Um, so right now, at least, it's like uh, Clover Finance and uh, Affinity are the, the two teams that are kind of like duking out to win this this kind of like fifth slot. And um, after this this batch is over, I believe this ends on uh, Thursday. Uh, once this actually ends, um, anyone that's kind of like opened up their their crowd loan and and uh, their, their auction for this, uh, it kind of gets like reset just because the, the next batch kind of will start after this. And that's why a bunch of teams are opening up their, their crowd loans again now. Um, as Cassie mentioned, the Centrifuge is opening this up tomorrow. And so um, when people actually like want to um, contribute to these things, uh, it's, it's, it's done via these things called like candle auctions. Um, so what happens is that there's kind of this like starting period, which is um, nothing kind of happens during this. It's it's during like the ending period that it is decided like who actually kind of wins. Um, so in this kind of like previous example, like as I mentioned, um, Clover Finance and Affinity, uh, they're kind of like uh, competing for this like fifth slot for things. Um, it's not really the same case. We're just like at the the very end of this. It's just like whoever has the most wins. Um, it's kind of this like candle auction thing. So whoever has um, the most uh, during kind of like any kind of like random period of time during this this ending period, uh, once the ending period actually ends, uh, there's this block that's determined via randomness of uh, which which block was actually the one where like a snapshot was taken. So it, it could be kind of like right when this ending period starts, or it could be in the middle, or it could be at like the very end. And so this is to incentivize people to not just like we attribute everything at the last minute and kind of like snipe a bid for this. Like if anyone's contributed to like eBay auctions or something like that, like probably seen this before, where just like everyone just bids at the last second and someone will just like try and just do that with like bots or something at the very end. Uh, this, this mechanism is to encourage people to kind of like do it um, uh, like a, a little bit more upfront and whatnot. Um, and so 
this this second batch of auctions, as I mentioned, uh, this actually starts December 23rd. Um, anyone that opens up their crowd loans for uh, the lease can actually start contributing when they open up the crowd loan. So as of tomorrow, you can start contributing to, to Centrifuge. Um, any other team that starts to open up their crowd loans, you could contribute to it at any point in time then. Um, and so the rest of these things are related to kind of like the, the first, uh, the first slot of the second batch. So um, the ending period of this first slot ends actually on Christmas, which is uh, kind of like not the best timing for this, but like blockchains are 24 seven and uh, it's kind of hard to schedule some of these things. Um, but basically for this first, for the, the first slot of the second batch, uh, the bidding ends uh, December 30th. And um, as I mentioned before, it's kind of like each thing is like a one week period. Uh, it's kind of very confusing because um, there's going to be five more slots in this second batch. Each one will be a one week long thing, but there's going to be a one week break in between them. Um, so essentially, each uh, you could kind of bid on things for two weeks for each slot. Um, the first one opening up December uh, 23rd, and then uh, essentially like every two weeks after that, there's going to be a new uh, auction that that ends essentially. Um, yeah, I think this is all the, the slides I have more or less, but, um, yeah, actually like practically contributing to things, uh, I'm going to post a, a link in the chat here, but, um, for Centrifuge, uh, this is the, the, the site that people can go to, to actually, uh, contribute to it from, um, this opens up tomorrow. And as I mentioned before, it's like the thing that you'll need for it is the, the Pope.js extension as well as, uh, dot inside of it to actually kind of participate. Um, and so yeah, I think that that kind of covers things. A uh, bunch of uh, random jargon in there. So uh, if anyone has questions, happy to, to answer stuff and, and go through this. So. Yeah. I can quickly share screen again and just show you guys what it looks like if you want to contribute your dot. Um, does that look all right, Will? Yeah. Cool. So this is polkadot.js.org. Um, and then this is the portal for Polkadot that Will mentioned. And if you want to contribute using you know, this portal directly on chain, uh, you can head over to pair chains and the crowd loans. And you'll see all of the different projects um, that have an ongoing crowd loan. And you'll be able to just contribute directly here. Um, and so you'll see Centrifuge pop up here tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, super excited. Um, and we recommend either using this directly um, or using our site centrifuge.io slash parachain slash crowdloan. Um, as Will mentioned, you know, you can set up your extension. Uh, that will definitely make it easier to actually participate. Um, and you'll see that pop up on the page here. Um, make sure that these accounts are um, discoverable on any chain, or at least on the on the Polkadot chain. Um, and yeah, here you'll be, be able to contribute directly as well, um, and also be able to see all the information again on all the different awards that we've got going on. Um, I think now. We can start answering some of your questions. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and pull this up. Um, maybe I'll try to start with any high level things first. Um, let's see. So is there an um, early Baker's early bird reward. Yes, there is. Uh, it's 10%. So definitely contribute early uh, within the first 72 hours is what we set it at for now. Um, then this next question, I mean, I do love this question because we have a great answer to it. Um, that too many projects promise magic, but never release any working product or prove, prove any revenue. Um, is your project also like this? If not, can you tell us what makes your project different from other projects? I would say in general in the Polkadot space, I am super impressed um, with the with the level of standard of all the different parachain projects. 
and Centrifuge is no exception there. Um, so, you know, we have a working product uh, and it launched in May 2020. Um, and we have over uh, almost 50 million in total value locked and um, 63 million in assets that have been financed. And so, you know, that's a pretty big proof point for us that we're doing something right here. And I think for us, becoming a parachain and connecting to the Polkadot ecosystem is being able to scale that um, and scale that at speed. Um, so I love answering that question because we're definitely building something here. Um, then on the next question, uh, on the subject of converting real world assets into digital, um, this is, I think, maybe, maybe a bit in depth, uh, dive into Centrifuge in order to answer that question. Um, I would definitely recommend going to our website to read more, looking into our documentation. But the gist of it is uh, that Centrifuge mints NFTs that represent real world assets. We do that using Centrifuge chain built on Substrate. And we bridge those over to Ethereum right now um, to Tin Lake pools to ac access financing in DeFi on Ethereum. And soon with the parachain on Polkadot. Um, then will Centrifuge parachain auction be available on parallel finance? Um, stay tuned. This is something uh, that's not announced yet, but I think you'll get some positive information here. Um, and then here, maybe a question for you, Will. I believe in Polkadot and the idea of parachain approach, um, which can change something in a better way for humanity. How do you believe Polkadot as a new way for thinking and living for humanity? That's that's a deep question. Very heady. Um, I don't know. It's like, I, I think it, it's cool because it enables a lot more like crib news for things. Like there's a lot of kind of like things that you can do with kind of like cross-chain interoperability and whatnot. Um, for example, if you like do things like financing real world assets or something like that, that gives you just like a new primitive to work with. And so you have a lot of these other different parachains that are working on things. Maybe it's like DeFi things, maybe it's like privacy preserving things. And just like composing these all into like really cool and unique applications, I think will be uh, quite, quite interesting. Um, I think the most exciting things are things that we haven't really thought of yet. It's kind of like going to be the combinations of a bunch of these things that enable like really cool use cases and applications that I don't think we've really seen too much yet. So I'm pretty excited and hopeful that people will make just really cool stuff. But... Yeah, definitely agreed. I think the integrations that we're going to see across different pair chains is going to be the most exciting. Um, I mean, at standalone, a lot of these projects are already doing really amazing things um, like stable coins, um, privacy preserving, transactions or even um, like being able to bridge across lots of different networks like that are that in itself um, that use case I think is is going to open up a lot of new potential for the whole blockchain space um, all right next question um, to get the early bird bonus is it better to participate through polka.js or through the centrifuge page? I would say that's really up to you and your preference. Um, we definitely recommend both of those. So use polka.js or the Centrifuge website, um, as opposed to any other like third party um, application. So exchanges or, um, or other wallets, we can't guarantee that those bonuses will be supported right now. Um, so definitely stay tuned if, if we announce something like Supporting Parallel or Bifrost will definitely update you on if those rewards uh, bonuses will be honored. Um, but definitely best to contribute directly uh, through Polkadot.js or through the Centrifuge website. Um, and the reward for the Centrifuge crowd loan is the Centrifuge token, CFG, um, and which is a different token than the reward was for the Kusama parachain. Uh, so Centrifuge's Kusama parachain Altair um, won a slot, and those contributors uh, receive the AIR token as a reward. Um, This is maybe a good question for you, Will. So will DOT be released um, after the lease period regardless? I.e., is there a situation 
that dot may not be returned, such as slashing. Um, it will always be able to be returned after this <clears throat> least period, so long as you own the keys for the like what you contributed from. Um, so as I kind of mentioned before, it's like the address that you contribute from is kind of like what you will get the, the tokens uh, to. So it's like whatever pair chain tokens you'll get that to that address. Um, at the end of the lease period, uh, the tokens don't like the, the dot or KSM doesn't just automatically come back to you. You have to submit a transaction to actually kind of like reclaim it. Um, there's kind of no circumstances that you won't be able to reclaim it uh, so long as you own that account still. Um, so you could just submit a transaction and then uh, you kind of unlock that back to be able to use again. Thanks. And I'm just going to clear out some of these questions. Okay. Um, some criticism here, risk free for sure, but why are the rewards so low? I mean, we're we're really trying to give you guys great rewards um, and hope that you will contribute to the crowd loan, but definitely stay tuned. Um, if there are ever gonna be any changes, we'll definitely announce them. And we're super keen to listen to the community um, definitely taking in all of your advice and even criticism to heart. Um, I would also just add in there that it's like the different things that you could like do with these parachains. Um, it's not like it's not just like you're just locking up dot and you're getting like money and value like in return. So like, you're getting like tokens that are actually like have utility and, and things that can actually like, be used in things. Um, and so it's not just like you get these tokens and you just immediately sell them, you get like value and stuff like that. It's like, um, this unlocks like a lot of opportunities to actually like do cool things and participate in these ecosystems and be a part of these communities. Um, and so even if it's kind of like uh, to start, like the utility doesn't exist. It's like in the future, there might be a lot of really cool things that you can use these different tokens for. Um, and it might be the case where it's like these other different pair chains as well will start to integrate a lot of different things like the whole like cross chain interoperability thing will um, allow a bunch of these different networks to actually like make cool things and be interoperable with each other. Um, and so I would say there's a lot of uh, things that will be able to be happening in the future that like we don't see right now. And so um, the value there I think is uh, gonna just be exponentially growing kind of as more things launch, as more integrations happen, and as more kind of just really cool projects and teams actually build things. So. Thanks, Will. Um, yeah, I think maybe to jump into the next question to answer like what Centrifuge is doing. So the question is, can you explain in detail how people use real world assets? Um, if they're tokenizing their house only if it's paid off, what if it has a mortgage, et cetera? Um, so they're tokenizing these assets to get financing. So, um, so it's instead of going to a bank to get a mortgage for this for this house, um, they're tokenizing this house and uh, minting this NFT, locking it into a tin link pool to access financing, for example, you know, to renovate or, or, or um, you know, do anything else that they, they might need to do and get liquidity um, while still owning this asset. Um, another uh, cool use case is, you know, freelancers that are getting um, invoicing large companies they sometimes take forever to get paid. Um, so in that time, uh, if they still want to, you know, um, be productive, you know, create more products, um, they can get financing for their invoice using TinLink. Um, they can get financing for their inventory using TinLink or um, even uh, one of the cool use cases we had in, uh, in the past was music royalty payments as well. So there's lots of different um, real world assets that are out there that we can tokenize and specifically in order to, to unlock um, the value there and get access to financing for those assets. Um, yeah, and I think for, for all of these different projects um, on Polkadot, these different use cases, um, locking in your dot entities into these crowd loans is a way of supporting that, those use cases and helping them become a reality. 
Um, there's a question, why isn't there a liquid locked dot option for centrifuge? Um, there again, I would just say stay tuned um, that you might hear an announcement there uh, soon that we're working on it. Um, and then let's see. This will be the first project offering financing of real world assets. Um, our regulations are concern for the project. So we'll definitely be the first project um, on, in the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, and you know, probably the first, if not one of the first uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem as well, but there are definitely other projects doing this now. Um, and so that's also been like, you know, reassuring for us as a team that there are other people that are doing this too and it really, makes us feel like we're going down the right path. Um, and there definitely are uh, regulations that we follow uh, as a project. And you know that includes things like uh, needing KYC in order to lock liquidity into different chin lake pools, um, you know, having a, a legal framework behind each of the chin lake pools that actually protects the investors in those pools. So um, you can definitely read more about this on the Centrifuge website, maybe listen to some of our other talks um, specifically about Tin Lake. But, you know, it is something that we take super seriously. And um, even though we're a DeFi project and a crypto project really trying to push the boundaries, um, we still we still kind of toe the line there of being experimental, really pushing the limit of things, but also at the same time. Uh, being really aware of regulations and how we can fit within that um, at the same time. Um, how to use the same address that you did to contribute KSM and Altair. Um, so technically they, they are different addresses, you know, they have a different address format. Um, but if you, um, if you go to your extension and, and you, know, you have this account, uh, in your in your wallet, you'll be able to see that if you switch the chain over to the Polkadot chain, you know that same account shows up, and it's a different address for the Polkadot chain, but it's actually the exact same account. And um, the reason why this is important is that both of those accounts have the same public key, even though they have a different address on different chains. And so, what's important is that we're able to see that you're contributing from the same public key. Um, and so using that same address, you know, allows us to verify on chain that this is actually um, the same account that's contributing to both Altair and to Centrifuge. And so that's how we're able to give out these loyalty bonuses. Mm. The early bird bonus is available for 72 hours. Um, and if Centrifuge doesn't win, well, yeah, we let's hope that doesn't happen, but we'll definitely have more information that comes out um, if that is the case. Um, and then the CFG per dot, it is 12% of the network um, that will be distributed as rewards to all of uh, the dot contributors. What time does the crowd loan start? Um, definitely keep your eyes peeled. I don't have an exact start time, uh, but you should expect it, I would say, mm, maybe a little bit before this crowd this crowdcast started. Um, so around the same time tomorrow. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find some gold questions here. Maybe, Will, I'd be curious what you think about this one. Do you think it's a good time for the auctions right now? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a market crash, but it definitely feels a little bit more like a bear market. And I feel like, I mean, with Polkadot and Kusama, these, these auctions are ongoing all the time now. So I feel like it's, I think it's something that's just going to continue and, you know, always be constant and new parachains coming up. But I wonder, like, are you thinking about this at all? Yeah, I mean, in general, I think like um, it's not as useful to think about these things in terms of like prices of whether it's like a bear market or like a bull market or stuff like that. Just because like crowd loans and, and, and things related to that are mostly like in relation to like dot 
and, and ratios to like these, these pair of chains. Um, so it's not like uh, for every $20, you get like $5 or something like that. It's kind of like in ratios of these pair chain tokens and whatnot. And so uh, it doesn't really matter if it's like dot prices up or dot prices down or if it's like bull market or, or bear market or, or things like that. Um, the only thing that I think kind of like that does somewhat affect is like, especially in the past year when everything has been going up and up and up, um, a lot a lot more people seem like opportunistic to be able to like try and raise funds or like launch things and stuff like that. And in general, I think it's like you see a lot of uh, hype and, and like not everything is as kind of like legit as it, it may seem sort of. Um, so like I, I like the bear market of 2018 because it's just people focused on like building things and whatnot. Uh, it, it's like people actually focused on actually like use cases and applications and UI, UX and end users and stuff like that. Um, I would actually be excited for another bear market just to see more of that and people actually focusing a lot more on like building things and less like hype and less like bringing up prices and whatnot. Uh, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I don't know if I've heard someone say they're excited for a bear market, but I don't know if excited is the right word, but I, I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind it, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. I think it is nice to be able to focus on actually building products that work um, that are actually going to make a difference uh, instead of just, you know, having these price hypes all of the time, for sure. Um, I also have a question for you. I would ask how how you feel like these Polkadot auctions are going compared to the Kusama auctions. Like, is there anything that jumps out as like feeling super different this time around? I think like Usama actually served like a really good purpose and just kind of like preparing people for kind of like what to expect uh, just in terms of actually like the process of, of opening up these these crowd loans of actually like having people contribute. Um, people are now kind of like aware of what crowd loans are and actually like how to, how to contribute and whatnot. Um, I've helped a bunch of like crypto funds actually like go through this process and uh, it was a lot easier this time around just because people like heard about it. They've kind of done it before. Um, and so it's actually a bit easier to, to get people on board and actually kind of do it. Um, yeah, besides that, I think it's, it's going to be interesting now because um, I think there's going to be just ongoing auctions in general. Like right now we have this like batch kind of schedule for things, but in the future, I think it's just going to be where it's kind of like just continuous auctions, um, a lot more teams actually like launching stuff. And so, yeah, really excited to see how this plays out both on, on Polkadot and uh, Kusama. Yeah, I think I'm excited to see how these auctions evolve over time. Like um, there's definitely a lot of excitement around it right now because they've just started, but I think at some point it's going to become like this normal cycle where projects are just going for the next slot and, um, you know, old projects renewing slots, new projects coming in with cool new ideas. I think I'm really excited to see how this, how the Kusama and Polkadot ecosystems really take shape and start growing. Um, sure. There's a cool question here um, on what's the best way to get involved, involved um, in CFG governance or dot governance, like communities and news, Discord, Reddit. What do you think on the dot side, Will? Where would you say people should get started first? Um, so there's a couple of different places. Uh, one of them is uh, Polk Assembly, which is kind of this forum that we use for kind of just governance related things. Um, so this is where a lot of people will actually post about new kind of like uh, proposals, discussions, uh, things related to like on-chain governance, uh, runtime upgrades, stuff like that. Uh, I actually just made a post there earlier today about like what we should spend treasury stuff on for, for Polkadot. So I would say that's like a pretty good place just to kind of browse through it and see what's what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> the other part I think is uh, a lot of like the Polkadot community is in both like Discord and uh, in Matrix. Uh, I, I'd say the actually like core like uh, parody and the Web3 Foundation teams uh, use like Matrix a lot more, but there's kind of bridges that both bridge Discord and um, the the Matrix stuff as well. And so it's a lot of discussions that that happened there. Um, Kate just posted a, a link to uh, the the discourse that you guys use. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think, so we use gov.centrifuge.io and I think we definitely look at projects like like Polkadot and Kusama um, and others that are like larger 
older um, to, to see what are the things that work and, and what doesn't work in order to really bring the community together to get involved in governance. Um, so one thing that we've got right now um, is uh, the runtime upgrade that just went through on Altair to um, enable democracy. And so if you want, you can you can probably find a lot of a lot more discussion on the forum around the Altair governance and how that's going, setting up the council, um, and really just trying to get people involved in governance on chain, um, as well as lots of discussion in the forums. Because I think uh, governance is it's even though it, the ideal of of having it on chain, you know, it's something that's really exciting, especially for a lot of blockchain community projects. Um, but there's a lot of um, coordination that happens off chain. And that's where these forums, these matrix channels, uh, these different sites to collaborate and talk about these issues are super important. Thanks, Kate, yeah. for dropping the Altair governance link. Um, I would also just add that it's like these things are like actually very like community oriented. Like there's a lot of changes to poke about that have actually been because of like the community. Like people suggested things. Um, all the things that are like on chain uh, are there's kind of like these storage items and parameters for the network. So it's like things like how much rewards go to people at stake, uh, like time periods, uh, a bunch of things like that. Uh, like anyone can propose changes to things and anything that gets voted actually like gets enacted. And so it's like people can actually make like very meaningful changes to the way that these things work. Um, and people actually have and like, Polkadot actually has been a very uh, awesome process of like the community actually like uh, giving feedback and iterating on a lot of things. And so it's been very cool to see actually kind of this uh, engagement happening with like the community, the, the ecosystem for that. I think that's probably a, a good place to end the discussion. Um, you can definitely find us in Telegram in the Telegram Centrifuge chat. Um, if you have more questions, want to find out more, you can also head to centrifuge.io. Um, and then if you want to get involved with uh, Polkadot governance, I would highly recommend checking out um, this Polka, Polkadot Polka assembly link that Will links um, and is super active in as well. Um, and this. Uh, is recorded and will be posted on YouTube in case you missed any of it, um, or you just want to check back and listen to our amazing voices yet again. Um, but thank you all for joining. Um, thank you, Will, for joining us. It's been great to have you. Um, I also explain to everyone how to contribute Dot. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Right, Cheers.